Welcome to Season 4 of Chatting with TAC, where we have a monthly conversation about all things new, exciting, and teen here at MML. Every month, different Teen Advisory Council members get together to talk about what we're working on, the new books we're ordering, the activities we're planning slash hosting, and a variety of interesting topics. Interesting is a bit of a stretch, but we try. TAC Coordinator Jamie, that's me, attempts to keep everyone on track, but quite often is the one who derails the train. This season, we're trying to add just a smidge of structure with the addition of different segments for each of our topics. Feel free to bounce around and skip the things you don't want to listen to. As a general disclaimer, we note at the beginning of each episode that the views and opinions expressed within our program are the, are the thoughts of our TAC members and do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of Marvin Memorial Library as an organization. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you enjoy this month's conversation. Welcome to the most current segment of Chatting with TAC. Here's where we'll talk about all of the current things we have going on here at MML for Teens. Hopefully, we'll see you at at least one of these upcoming events. Okay. Somebody has to say hello! <laughs> Hi! I'm Jasmine. I'm Potter Tack. I'm the Vice President. Welcome to a brand new season that Jamie was attempting to fix, and I think Jamie made it worse. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Um, so, we have with us today, Jasmine, Jasmine who is... The uh, vice president of TEC. You're yes. also the treasurer. You are also the treasurer. We oh, talked about yay. that at the officer's <laughs> meeting that I think I forgot to tell you. Fantastic. Who else do we have? I'm the president of TEC. Mm-hmm. What's your name? <laughs> Maya. We got Maya. Maya is here. Jasmine is here. And Hannah's in the back. Hannah's current TAC officer position is what? Secretary. Secretary. Exactly. Good job. Okay. So we're going to start off with our first segment past the weird, ridiculous intro slash introductions that we're, <laughs> we're going to have to practice. Aside from that, we're going to talk, what are we talking about first? What's happening at uh, Marvin Memorial Library. Yes, so what is happening at Marvin Memorial Library? Can you talk about any of it? So, we do, like, Teen Studio, Nerd Herds. Like, Nerd Herd is, like, a study group where you can, like, have... Is it study Nerd, something like studying, helping people. You're so <laughs> close, and yet still so far away from the correct answer. <laughs> Nerd Herd is our book club. Oh, yeah, book club, sorry. Teen Studio is, is, the, study is the studying, art, and like, writing, gaming, whatever we and end up doing <laughs> one. Sorry. Which today was mostly trying to kill Jamie. <laughs> yep. <laughs> then like, so when does Teen Studio meet? On Mondays and Thursdays. At? 3.30. There you go. We're going to yep. do Mondays in the children's department so that we have access, easy access to the yeah. library resources. And Thursdays in the garden room. Yay. Yes. <laughs> then we do... Uh, Movie nights, which is the uh, first Monday, first Monday of every month, which is very cool. So please come out. What are we watching us. in October? What did we pick? Did we pick Hocus Pocus? I think so. That's what I asked for. October. Oh, yeah, it was. I think it was. It was either Hocus Pocus. Or something like uh, Frank been... Meanie or something like that. Yeah. I that think... was Frank Meanie is like a backup. Yeah, something like that. But Keep did... an eye out on the October calendar because we're past the September. Yeah, yeah I forgot about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is chaotic. Okay. Very chaotic. So, moral of today's story was everybody <laughs> needed practice despite telling me they didn't. <laughs> so, teen Studio. So, Nerd Herd is our book club. What yep. are we talking about in September? Best thing you read all summer. Exactly. Best thing you read all summer. Um, they meet on, what is it, the third Monday? I think 
think. Yeah, yeah the yeah. third Monday at 5.30, and we're going to talk about best things we read all summer or the worst thing. That works, too. Um, yeah, I have a couple ideas what I read mm-hmm. over the summer, which was bad. <laughs> Very bad. Some of them are. Yep. Okay, so that covers Teen Studio, Nerd Herd. Movie Night. Movie Night, which we don't have one in September, but we do have one in October. Yep. Focus Focus! Yay! Um, First one, not the new one. I thought the new one wasn't bad. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't really good either. Yeah, the first one was better, but the yeah. the, the new one wasn't bad. Um, <clears throat> and then what else? Oh, Teach Me Tuesdays. What are we doing with Teach Me Tuesdays? What are those? Those are brand new. Explain them to anybody out there <laughs> okay. in the interwebs who... So, Teach Me Tuesday is like... Somewhat on the lines, like, of teaching you something that's important or that you would like to know. Somewhat on the lines like that. Yeah, we're learning new things. Yeah, that you probably don't know about. Sometimes they're going to be useful life skill things, and sometimes they're just going to be fun. When do we meet for Teach Me Tuesdays? Is it the third Tuesday? It is the third Tuesday, yes, at 6 o'clock. We're going to start in September with, what's our September theme? Line dancing. Line dancing. We are going to line dance. Fun. And then in October, do we remember what we said we were going to do in October? Because I don't. Sewing. Sewing. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun. I want to learn sewing so bad. See? <laughs> it's a it's a viable life skill, but also kind of fun. Yeah, just don't poke yourself. Yeah, I you got to be a little plenty careful. Plenty of times. <laughs> and it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I got done sewing at school one time. I was trying to sew dresses for choir, and it didn't go so well. I kept on poking myself. It does require a smidge amount of... Yeah, I messed up the dress, like, too, so... Carefulness. <laughs> like, dress. just a little yeah, bit. very badly. <laughs> um. So, Teach Me Tuesdays. And then we have... What's our September special? Uh... TAC recruitment night. There you go. See, <laughs> we at least have a good president. I don't know about anybody else on our officer board, but we at least got a good president. Maya knows what's up. So our TAC recruitment night, what are we doing with that? So we're trying to get uh, new members, hopefully. Yeah, that we would need some. Pay attention. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, they would hopefully pay attention. You mean better than... Uh, our seasoned officers apparently do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Better than me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, we're going to do games, music, crafts, fun stuff that night. Even if you know you don't want to be a TAC member, it's still a good night to come hang out. Maybe we can get the button machine out. Maybe. Although, based on tonight's, this afternoon's ability to use the button machine, I... Probably not, because that yeah. was not good. Not so sure. We'll see. Um, but when is recruitment night? That's the... Is it the 28th? I think it is. It's the 28th. It's the last Thursday, anyway, at 5.30. We'll do that out in the garden room. Should be fun. I want to see new faces. We see them. We do have a few new faces. Yeah. But I think if we can get them to... If we can get them to... Like... Take a deep breath. And not... I think it'll be good. Be so energetic. Yes, but we don't want to complain about energetic because so last much, year I com- we last year nobody <laughs> had any energy at all and it was horrible. So we like the energy. Just we just like, need to focus it a little better, I think. Yeah. I think we're just going to that's going to be our project is the focusing of the energy. Yeah, like we need to focus. Yeah. Not a lot, just a little bit. Yeah. Like where we can actually pay attention and listen for once. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> yep. We're brand new. It's only September. We got lots of time. We can still yeah. figure some stuff out. Um, do we have anything else going on that we are super excited about that we want to talk about that we want people to know about of what's going on this year so that they know what to keep an eye out on the calendar for? So we in I think April we have a art April is like an art themed and we have like this uh event i don't remember what it's called it's, describe it to me and i maybe so have an like answer a, there's a lot going on in april i need you to give uh, me more information you like 
like draw or do so, like put your out art on like display or something like that. Yeah, we're gonna hopefully we'll do another art show. Last year's yeah. went really well. We've yeah. decided we weren't scared away, and we're gonna try it again. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And then we do murder mystery. Maybe. Maybe. We if we have to talk about that one just a little bit because we need to, to talk the, about like, how we're gonna do some of that. But I think we could probably do that again. Yes. We just like need to have people like remember things. Yeah, that's usually <laughs> helpful. <laughs> but yeah, we gotta talk. We gotta talk like, to Shelly about that one. How did I um, not? Mm -hmm. Last year. Um, anything. anything else we have on the calendar that people should be excited about or should know? Uh, I don't think so. I think that we covered a lot. The, technically, we did mention everything that's on our September calendar. Yeah. I don't know how good of a job we did talking about it, well. but we definitely <laughs> mentioned it. So I think you I think that I think that counts as a what's happening at MML. It, so anything it, else? No. That we want to talk about in that realm of things before we move into different segments of activity? No. no? Okay. Then. I'm gonna, you gotta stop that yeah. one. Join us for a quick look at some of the new books we have available here at MML. We'll highlight some of the titles that we think look the most interesting. We probably haven't read them yet, but maybe you'll get lucky. You never know. Remember, if you don't like what you see, send us some specific recommendations and we'll do what we can to get those authors slash titles on our shelves. Okay, so we're going to talk about some new books. And we're talking about them in the story time room because that's where the, the laptop and the microphone was. So, um, but hopefully we'll have some other TAC members who can talk about it, maybe from the teen zone. That'll definitely be in the video, but might not be in the audio version of the podcast. So, what things did we take off of the new book displays that we thought looked really cool? Okay. Want to go first? Uh, sure. Okay. So, this one is a graphic novel. It's Clux Striker. It's about a girl who wants to become a... Talk a little louder. <laughs> it's about a girl who wants to join the Smiths, who are <laughs> warrior engineers. Well, that sounds kind of cool. And she wants to prove that she's capable of doing it. And I noticed that this also has some color I illustrations in it, which are cool. Well, you don't see that as much in manga, do you? No. No, that is neat. <laughs> I like that. That's cool. Uh, that's what... <laughs> That's a good one. That's a that's okay. different. That's neat. Okay, Jasmine, what did you find? So I found this on uh, shelf, Saving Stevie. There you go. And I found it really <laughs> interesting because it's about like, fan. Wait, not family. Either. Yeah, family and like homeless and like people being poor. Let's see what's the what's the front description say? When doing the right thing might be the worst thing ever. Ooh. So I found that really interesting, and I really do That's hope I get to read it, though. It's a slangly lit yet moving story about love, family, and ultimately the meaning of responsibility. Ooh. Yeah, so I'm a good really cover. Wanna, Look at that. I'm hmm. really happy to read that one here soon. Yeah, that one looks. I can see why I bought that one. I don't think yeah. I'd read it, but I can see why I bought it. It looks good. <laughs> I mean, it does look good, but we've talked about... How I don't, I don't like those books too much. What else did you pick? Which has a really uh, cool cover. Look at this Anami, cover. This. A love story. Yeah. I found it, like, I mean, sort cool. of interesting because the cover, and it's but like, The cover's cool. Oh, I guess, look at that. That's really not a heart. That's like a person. Yeah. That's cool. Sorry. I'm, and like, I'm interrupting about, and distracting. It's like, supernatural and mysterious and like, a family going from place to place and, uh, is it? It's a gothic like tale full of mystery and romance. And it has, like, go to Scottish castles and uh, two other things. And these two young people, like, it says, like, like something about heroes and other Hold things. On, let's see. Without getting, without reading the whole description, because I said that would be boring. Let's see. <laughs> Hazel Sinnott is a lady who wants to be a surgeon more than she wants to marry. Jack Kerr is a resurrection man who's just trying to survive in a city where it's too easy to die. 
So not gonna lie, I think that sounds fun. And it is, this is book one. I'm pretty sure I also ordered book two because I found book two and was like, oh, this is fun and then decided I probably needed book one. Yeah, so this is why I picked these two books. They seem really interesting. I can't wait to read them. They did seem interesting. Okay, I pulled, yeah. not, none of us pulled, we should have looked at the nonfiction a little better, but I did pull this one. I pulled The Witch and the Vampire, which just looks kind of fun. It's a Rapunzel retelling where a witch and a vampire who trust no one but themselves must journey together through a cursed forest with danger at every turn. And it does involve, it's, it's got witches and it's got magic and somebody's desperate to con escape confinement. So like, that's always a good thing. Um, and monstrous trees that devour humans whole. Like, that's not a forest I want to hang out in, but it sounds like a really cool book. I might have to read this one. I mean, generally, we don't let me take new books home because it takes me a long time to read them. But this one looks like, this one looks pretty cool. And it's just, it's got a pretty cover. It does. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I also pulled, just because this one is fun, it has really good pictures in it. It's called Enchanted Recipes. They're like Disney recipes. Um... That one doesn't have... I opened it, the only page that doesn't have a picture. Ooh, see? Witty and the Tramp Spaghetti. And mm -hmm. there's... Ooh, those look yummy. Kronk Spinach Puffs. Ooh. Yeah, they look good. I'm a fan of... I'm a fan of recipe books. I don't... I don't... I don't cook from them very often. I'm not a big recipe person so much as a... Me let's either. throw stuff together and see what happens. Yeah, um, that's me. But this book, like I said, if nothing else, this book has really good pictures in it. Um, I'm trying to find. There's one Amanda found. She really likes. Ooh, this cake. It's Cinderella's wedding cake. It's just pretty. And I just happened to see with this is Ariel's milkshake. That's pretty. Look at that. It's like pink and green, and I bet it's got mint ice cream. I see strawberry, whipped cream. Mm. Oh, pistachio ice cream. Yeah, yeah, no, that's kind of gross. I do mint. Mint would yeah. be better. But pistachio, no, but that's pretty. No. It's kind of cool. All of these new books can be found where? In the teen section. In the teen section. There we go. So I ask really easy questions. I don't know why everybody's so confused all the time. Um, and there are more. We just pulled a handful that we thought were cool. And like I said, hopefully we'll have a couple of our newer TAC members also talking about this from the teen zone. But like I said, I don't know if I'll have that in the audio section. So I wanted to make sure that we had something in the audio section, if nothing else. Um, anything else we want to mention? Nope. Okay. No. During this segment, <laughs> there's a lot of them now, <laughs> we're going to talk about all of the things that we are currently reading. Topics will vary, but it is guaranteed that I, Jamie, will almost always be mentioning a picture book because this time of the year, that's all I read. Hopefully, you're going to find some really good reading and inspiration some things you had maybe didn't know we had or some things you are excited to look into now that you know they exist so hopefully you'll find something good so our next segment is what's our next segment what we're currently reading in new books too well no we're gonna do what, what we're, we're currently, currently reading. reading. See, this is nobody pays any attention when I speak. I'm telling you, no. I speak Greek, and I don't even know it. Well, it's <laughs> um, both because both new. Well, sometimes it's they're new. new. What we're reading is new. Sometimes it is. Yes, I will grant you that. However, we're gonna, we're this particular portion is will be introed and segmented as. I think I'm gonna record different intros for each segment. Yeah. So that I have them ready to go in the computer and I can just add them each time like I did last year when we added in some new stuff. Yeah. Um, I think I'll do that. And so this, this we're currently reading segment will have a more cohesive intro eventually. But for right now, what are we currently reading? Okay. Anybody have anything at all? I do. So I just started reading this book today. It's a good day to die. There you go. <laughs> like, I am only a few pages in, but it's very interesting. It's a terrible title. I know, it is. So... I mean, it's you... great if you're into the murder and the mayhem, but that's yeah. the terrible title. Like... Let me find something. Okay, so what's the premise of this book? Like, it's about a guy that wanted to kill someone, sort of. 
on the lines of that. And it's like a crime trade sort of thing. Okay. Okay. So I love crime books. <laughs> So, yeah. yeah. Lots of people do. We gotta watch. Are you watching your spikes? Because I don't think you are. <laughs> no, I'm not. There you go. But uh -huh. it's a really a good book. And if you... It's book two. Did you read book one? No. <laughs> oh, well, I thought maybe that was why. It gave you something to talk about. But, no. okay. I'm just, like, really interested in crime books. So... Mm -hmm. She loves horror. Yeah. I do love horror. Yes, I do. <laughs> so. Yeah, whatever floats your boat. But, no, I like sleeping at night. I don't read that. Okay. I'm reading Cat Plus Gamer. Ah, oh, those looked really cute. Are they as cute as they looked? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's about a woman who adopted a cat, and she's also a gamer. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And she likes to play video games with her cat. Like, let's zoom in on this. This is like the cutest thing. Look at this. Look at that face. <laughs> I only read one chapter of it so far. <laughs> so does the cat game too? Or is it like, it's like the cat and her, and then it's like the adventures of them? Um, I didn't get far enough to know, but so far the cat doesn't game yet. Okay. <laughs> if the cat does game, that would be really cool. That would be fun. <laughs> Just seeing a cat, like. With his little paws. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Are you reading anything right now, Hannah? No. Nothing at all? Like, it's okay if you don't have it to show us, but do you have anything that you're currently reading? Uh. You can say no. I, it's, I think it's called Smile. Oh, is that the one by what's her name? The graphic novel? Or is it a weird. It's a comic. Yeah, correct. No. Yeah. Okay. So it's got I a can't... blue cover with like the emoji yeah. wearing braces. I can't remember what yeah. the name is, but it's a good book. Yeah. I've read it like 10 times already. Huh. Lots of people like that one. That one is a good one. We have that one. And then there's another one that's, I think, called Guys. I haven't read that one yet. Hmm. Or like Sisters. And they're Sisters, and she did drama. Yes. Um, I don't know what else off the top of my head. She made a lot of books. Yeah. I just can't mm -hmm. remember her name. Um, I can't either. It starts with a T. It's, eh, it'll come to me later. Tina? No. Tiffany? No, her last name starts with a T. Like oh. you shelve it under T. <laughs> yeah. yeah so I'll, I'll get there. Eventually. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll know her name eventually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Anything yeah. else anybody's reading? Are they making you read uh, anything dumb for school? Because school just started? Not yet. But on Fridays we had to read books and i'm kind of reading a i don't it's called the third hostage and also sounds like, terrifying but whatever because uh, they makes uh, you feel better <laughs> uh teenage daughter her father and her stepmother went on to like a uh yacht for like a vacation to tour the world and whatnot and these uh pirates like uh, get on board and uh, held everyone captive and where I'm at now uh, they see another boat coming so the uh, pirates uh, he held holds them at gunpoint and threatens to shoot them if the uh, make marine people don't move back and they refuse to move back dang so I don't know if someone gets this shot or yet. This is terrifying. It is very like, terrifying. Like, why are we paying attention to this? Like, why are we, why? Whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, John, didn't you read The Mockingbird? Uh, yeah, I did. Last year. <laughs> like, Hunger Games? No. No, the book Mockingbird is called or The Mockingbird. Did... It's about, like, uh, these two kids... I think they're like twins or something. And uh, they keep trying to uh, get this man, I think his name is Boo. That's his nickname. And uh, so they keep on like trying to think of creative ways to get him out of the house. Like with money, yarn, and like a fishing rod or some kind of something. And uh, 
then Boo sends like them gifts like gum and he uh carves like things out of soap. Are we talking to kill a mockingbird? Yes. Okay, there you go. That is it. Uh-huh. I you did not describe but yeah. This is okay. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's definitely part of the book, yes. <laughs> so it's really good. You really It is need a good one, yes. Read it. Harper Lee. I've never read Fantastic. that before. Ever. Good story. And we watched a movie of it too. Mm-hmm. How, and what was the movie the, about? Like the book. And the girl for a ho- for Halloween dresses as a hamper play. Yeah. And she gets squashed. <laughs> yeah, poor oh girl. She's got a lot going on in her life. And the brother that. gets uh, knocked into a coma. <laughs> so, fun. Not really fun, I feel like we missed some major plot points in that particular novel. However, I'm going <laughs> to let that one sit as a, that's what you got out of it, and at least you got something out of and it. And it's about, so... like, racism and other things. Mm-hmm. Dang. Yeah. Yeah, it, To Kill a Mockingbird actually has Very a lot going on. It's racist. got a lot of stuff. Um, when I saw To Kill a Mockingbird in Cleveland, the woman who played the horrible racist neighbor was the original, um, what's her name? Like in the movie? Scout. Scout, yeah. She was Scout in the movie, which was oh, pretty cool. cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I never nice knew that. Nice little circle. Yeah. I never uh-huh. knew that. <laughs> so, anybody else have anything... You know, that they're currently reading. I'm back into the season of I only read picture books. Um, <laughs> picture books ain't that bad. No, they're great. This this year we're learning about the alphabet. And one of the books I read last week in the, in the um, like, ABCs, we did uh, just generic ABCs last week. Um, one of them was, why is for yacht? And I want to know who, like, who in the world is going to think why is for yacht? When learning the ABCs. No one. Yeah, no, that's why I said. Like, yeah, 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 like, yo-yo or yak. Yeah. Would have been Some people better. do use yo-yo a lot. But yeah. But not yacht. <laughs> no, but, like, yacht. Because, like, the picture, because we were, that was one, didn't have a lot of words. So, like, I was having the kids, like, help me yeah. with it. And they were, it was like, A is four. And then they told me what the picture was. Oh. And they couldn't figure out what yacht was. Because they're like, it's a boat. I said, it is a boat. This is why this picture is silly. Miss Jamie would have picked a different one. Um, yeah, pick a yo-yo. A couple other ones were kind of weird. Like, K is for keyhole, which is weird when the picture also had a kangaroo and a koala in it. And I think there was another one that was kind of goofy. There was another one, too, that was kind of goofy. That Oh, J was jack-in-a-box, which most people yeah, don't know what that is anymore. If we Y, you can use Y for yellow. Or, yeah, yellow would work. Coming. It just, yeah, but no, they went with yacht. That's dumb. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of dumb. Cute book, but I was not impressed with their selection of words. <laughs> oh, and currently in my room, I think for like English, for mm-hmm. for like Mrs. Dennis, we read Button Button. It's like about um, they they have they receive like this package by their own like their doorstep, mm-hmm. and it's like a button, like they don't push it until like later on and then um because norma she wants to push it but then someone has to die to, for them to get like fifty thousand oh, dollars about that and arthur he doesn't but then close to i think like the end of the book she norma pushes it and then her husband arthur dies yeah because if you push the button someone you don't know dies yes i read that in ninth and grade for english one of the questions was did you really like um, like, basically, she, like, did she like, really know her husband? Yes. Did, do you really think she, do you, like, really know your husband? Well, if it said to somebody you don't know is gonna die and her husband died, I'm gonna say she didn't know her husband. Exactly. Always. Which is the sad fact of marriage. There I mean, are a lot of marriages where the people don't really know each other, which is what usually leads to divorce. But, yeah. or just very, very unhappy people I just living together the forever. Away, like, smash <laughs> thing on thing. Smash it with a hammer or a baseball Yeah, bat. but smashing it with a hammer isn't it the same thing as pressing the button? No, no. breaking it. Okay. Arthur, he didn't want to push the button. Should have gone on that. Should have listened to Arthur. Because I think what he Arthur said is like it's not worth pushing the button to lose someone's innocent, like someone innocent that didn't even mm-hmm. do anything. 
done. Yeah, that's especially if he was advocating wrong. for not pushing the button and he ended up dead. That's horrible. He died. Yeah, that's not anyway. really nice to do. Like, he I didn't rather... want to push the button, but he died. Yeah, <laughs> I'd rather survived. not push the button because I, I would not want to push a button and someone die. Because I would be mm-hmm. really guilty if I knew the person. <laughs> like, if I found, if we found a doorstep, um, if we found a button on our doorstep, I wouldn't even bring it in, but they brought it in. Like, I would don't bring it. the button in if you don't even know who dropped it off. I would have kicked it. Saying, or threw yeah, it. Yeah, well. Like, it's common sense. If you... Well, I mean, I don't go around kicking packages, but... <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll give it like, like that. But it wasn't, like, in a wooden-like package. It was, like, in a glass, like, square thing. That could have been did a it least, did, it have, did it have a note on it explaining all this? No. Then they how did they know? A button. How did they know what was going to happen if they pushed a button? Because there was this guy that came to their, I think, their doorstep. And I guess where they brought it in. Yeah, and yeah. they said that if they want to push it for $50,000, but then someone would have to die that they didn't know. There are a few, a few plot holes in this, but it's an interesting concept. Makes for good discussion. That's the best kind of, that's the best kind of... English class assignment is the one where you actually end up in a discussion of things. Some of then, them are dumb, like, but that one's good. For, like, a question that we had to answer, uh, we had to, uh, like, from our perspective, it acts as if we if we would push the button for, like, 50000 or 10000 And most of our class said no, but a lot of them said yes. I think one kid uh, two years ago said, like, because he wanted to see someone die. I guess. Okay. Yeah, that's not at all unsettling. No. He got in trouble for it, though. Of course he would get in trouble. Well, I feel like that's not necessarily a trouble so much as a, like, now's a good time to talk to the counselor about... What feelings you're having? Because this is this is not going to lead to good life decision making. No, it won't. Like, <laughs> but I think on one of my questions, it asked like, wait, hold on. If I can remember, <laughs> if I can't remember every single question. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of them says like, how Arthur felt when Norman wanted to push the button and stuff. I what I put is like he didn't want to push the button and he didn't like um no he didn't know who it was who brought it or like dropped it off and he didn't know if it was like wired or like there was like, like it could have been a bomb it. yeah they didn't yeah. know if it was like a bomb attached to it or something mm-hmm. makes sense it's been attached to your car <laughs> but Norma she was the idiot that pushed it Arthur was the it was Norma's fault <laughs> why Arthur died. Yeah, just like, a bit. I'd say so. You never push a button if you don't know what it's for. Ever. Generally speaking, no. Not supposed to. It could have been a bomb. However, I'm a big fan of button pushing. Yeah, because if someone buttons, tells you it will kill and somebody. If somebody told me that, no, I wouldn't do it. But Literally, if someone tells you it will kill someone you don't know, do not push the button. It's not worth Killing someone. So if I would still push it to see someone die because they're stupid. I wouldn't. Yeah, no. But, Mm-mm. yeah. Do we have any other things we've been reading recently? Things that, you know, not. won't make me lose sleep at night? No. No. No? Okay, of course not. Then, do we have anything else to add or do we want to move on to some other things we wanted to talk about today? We can move on to some other things. Yeah. One, two, three. Hi! Ow. That's the only time in this entire podcast anybody's going to be able to hear you. Look at that. <laughs> okay. So, let's Whoa. start talking about some chaos, okay? This is our regularly <laughs> scheduled ridiculousness. What are yeah. we talking about today? Okay, so, let's start with my music teacher. She is... Three months pregnant, I think, and uh, she is having a girl. We don't know her name yet, but uh, we hope we find out what the name is. 
Because so teacher, eventually you're gonna. Because the teacher has been updating us about the baby and all that. So, yay! Oh, and, the, and the funny thing is, is when she first told us, Mr. Neighbor said, "It's not mine. Don't look at me." <laughs> Seems like an odd response from a person who's not her husband, but Mr. Yeah. Neighbors tends to be a little odd, so okay. Yeah, he is. But other than that, I still don't have my license. Yeah, she almost killed me and my dad, man. Like, learning how to drive is hard. That was like almost two years ago. I still can't drive. Well, that's why I'm never going to be I in a car with you. I had my permit from the time I was 16 till after. I was 18. I, I had still my don't permit. have my permit. I had my permit for a while. Well, you know, that might help. I mean, this is Ohio. They make you take driver's ed here. I know. Like, that's usually a good thing. Yeah. You have a better idea of what you're supposed to be doing and what you're not supposed to be doing as opposed to the, you know, everybody's yeah. parent teaches them different rules because everybody drives different. <laughs> yeah. I got a boyfriend. That's exciting. <laughs> Didn't seem on topic, but okay. <laughs> but okay, you so want to share any I, other information? I, she knows. She knows who it is. You gonna share with the rest of the class, or are you just yeah. gonna keep it to yourself? Okay. Well, it's not Aaron nor yet. It's uh. I mean, it's Marcus. I don't know his last name. So <laughs> wait just a minute here. <laughs> Wait just a minute. <laughs> you are claiming this person as your boyfriend, and you yeah. don't know his last name. He never. He never tell. He never told anybody. All he told us was Marcus. But you know what? The funny part is, she's going to homecoming with Aaron. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. Oh, we like that's Aaron. Why. Aaron's a nice kid. Um. Well, weird, but he's a nice kid. We like him. Yeah, but, uh, uh, but no, like you, you are you are claiming this person as your boyfriend, your significant other, your 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 like partner type person. Yeah, and you don't know his last name. That's right. <laughs> okay, now generally speaking, I don't tell you what to do. It's your life; you get to make your own decisions. However, in general, that's a really bad idea. Like, bare minimum, you should know this person's name. Then he's going to uh, surprise me for my birthday. Like, spoil me for my birthday. You should still know his name. How did you meet this person that you don't know his name? I know his name, I just don't know his last name. How did you meet this person? <laughs> he was a new kid. Okay. A few weeks ago. But, like... <laughs> He, 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 you have physically seen this person. Yes. He's in my class, in my okay. last two classes. That's a little there. better. <laughs> you have homework from Jamie. Learn your boyfriend's last name. <laughs> I'll ask him tomorrow if he's there. Good plan. Now sit back down. Yes, You're getting distracting. Yeah. Okay. What else was I going to say? <laughs> you want to say something? Oh, and, uh, sorry. But Eddie, well, Edward... When I told him I'm dating Marcus, he said all I, we needed was Lucas. Like, I know I watched Lucas and Marcus' YouTube channel, but come on now. It, no, Lucas, we, Marcus, we don't need a Before. Lucas. <laughs> no Lucas, we only need a Marcus. <laughs> what? I feel like I'm missing pertinent information and we're just going to jump, skip, and hop right <laughs> over that. Maya, do you have anything that you want to share with the room that will lead us in a different direction than this was currently taking us in? <laughs> um, yesterday I went to the mini golf thing with Adam. Oh, fun. And uh, I like mini golf. <laughs> I'm bad. He accidentally hit me with a ball and it hurt really bad. It was on Wait, the back of my I was knee. Say, they use real golf balls, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, no, those things are horrible. Like, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> dent your head horrible. That's yeah, awful. It hurt. Yeah, it hurt. It's, it's a golf ball. <laughs> How bad did it hurt? You got a bruise? A uh, it felt like it would bruise, but I didn't see one, so. Oh, well, that's, oh, that's impressive. Good. That's, that's good. good. That you're lucky. You yeah. And so I got a Pioneer, and. What are you taking? Criminal justice. Okay, I thought I'll that was what it was, but I couldn't remember. And we, I think last week we did a uh, mile and a half, six that six laps around the Pioneer parking lot. Someone threw up while running. 
Uh, yeah, that's what do, happens. Uh, it's dry do, running is gross. Then we do push and sit ups. We uh, had to do uh, the girls in criminal justice could do like a dead hang kind of thing. The longest someone uh, hang mm -hmm. from like a bar was a, a minute and three seconds. Oh, I only only hang there for seventeen seconds. So, yay. Oh, and uh, me and Jasmine are in track, and when my team was practicing for sprints, <laughs> I was running over the hurdles, and I tripped and hurt my knee, so. That was last year, though. Yeah. So, <laughs> no current injuries? No, but then there's some annoying middle schoolers that's in the high school. Well, that's that's what year. happens. They, they they grow up, they they get to new grades, and then you have to deal with them again. But some of them, dude, they're, like, freaking so tiny. Yeah, the freshmen, sometimes, some years, the freshmen are, like... They just keep on getting smaller and smaller. Every year. Well, in theory, that's because you keep getting older and bigger, but... <laughs> yeah. Hey, I won't have to worry about them next year. I, I'm gonna be in my year next year. What do you think I'm taking? Probably what Linda's taking. So grab the cards. Yeah. Or something related. Yeah, because... Well, that'll be fun. Books. Isn't that what Ollie took? Oh, uh, I think you were in that lab for two years. Yeah, isn't that what Ollie took? Yeah, I think so. I mean, he did something artsy. I think, I think, I it, was think it was graphic, was, wasn't it yeah, graphic? it yeah. was. Mm -hmm. But, yay. And in Criminal Justice, we finally got our uniforms. Nice. And today, we did a, like a simulation kind of thing and he what said, were you simulating like shooting a gun oh fun so he and this was the first time he said this um since it was the first time this is the best he's seen anyone do the simulation things and they're buying like new like gun kind of things they're like fake and we're getting holsters and everything else in it, so i'm happy and dude, bro, she missed the two people she was supposed to shoot, man. <laughs> I missed them like three times. <laughs> okay, you missed them, but did you accidentally hit anybody else? Yeah. Ah, oh, jeez, <laughs> Oh my gosh. They, they all, all had guns. guns so. You're gonna want to work on that. They all had like, guns. Like, just, so. just for, you know, before they give you a real gun... And you, you know, are expected to responsibly and safely take care of other people, you're going to want to work on that so yeah. that I'm not terrified to walk the streets. And at the end of senior year, we get to get tased and our parents get to watch. Yep, we're all going to cry. That's horrible. I know. Some parent acts at the open house, can we watch the kids get tased? And all the kids are like, No! <laughs> No. I mean, I understand I understand the whole general thought of if you've been tased, you know what it's okay. like and you use it only when you need to use it rather than willy-nilly whenever. But I'm not entirely yeah. sure about the whole, like, let's make that a public entertainment night. I know. Like, the are gonna be I feel like that's, so a thing that, that's a thing that, like, really should be maybe not broadcast to everybody else like the way tasers work doesn't that affect your nervous system like don't most people pee their pants they pee or poop their pants yeah because it affects your nervous system asmr <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry i had to do it okay. okay i had to do it i'm sorry i had to do it <laughs> I mean, like I said, not really my business, but I feel like that's not a that's not a like public viewing event day. I'm not even convinced that that should be a do it in front of your classmates event. No. Like we gotta buy parts for the taser ourselves. <laughs> Why did you pick this program? Because I like. I don't know. <laughs> Cause I like pick what program? This program? Criminal justice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Although, if if you're if you're asking about other programming, if you really want to answer, why did you pick TAC as a program? Oh, because um, uh, 
because the trips are so fun. Um, I love the pictures. Um, that's it. I no, say something. It's not it. Um, because we get to do movie nights, we get to watch movies, eat snacks, which snacks are the best part. Now, granted, <laughs> you can yeah. do all of those things without being a TAC member. Like, really, there are very can few things something? that are TAC only. Okay, I mean, it's mostly band. just field not. trip. Okay, the reason I why I joined because I need something to do, and that's usually the, how we get people. <laughs> oh, yeah, I need yeah, something. We were all Mom made me, <laughs> and we get to help out with like other events, like. Like, we participate in the Halloween Parade, we do a trick-or-treat at the library, and other things, mm -hmm. so. We do a lot of fun stuff, and yeah. And we get to see little kids. <laughs> little kids are tiny so cute. kids. They are so usually tiny. cute, yes. I think all little tiny kids are so cute. Mm -hmm. Mostly babies. I <clears throat> got the whole nine babies. Well, not my babies. Oh my god, no. Wait, <laughs> I didn't say gosh. nothing. I got the hold of my cousin's babies. They're a one and two now. Which is fun. Yeah. And when I turn 18, I'm getting another tattoo right here. What are you going to put right there? A Either heart like with an arrow through it or like a Why? rose. I don't know. I want to get another tattoo. Can I point out? Oh, Once again, I have Ooh. nothing against tattoos. However, before you permanently etch something into your body... You should probably have a reason better than, I don't know. Like, like, that's a permanent fixture. It should have some personal meaning to it outside of, I don't know, I just wanna. Uh, for the heart, I don't know if I'm probably gonna do the uh, air shoe. I might do like a broken heart. I guess I had my heart broken like twice. In the past, well, like, few months. sideways, that's a part of life. Like, this will be Not our second. favorite part of life, but like, it's, this will it's... be my second tattoo. I have my first one on my arm. Show sure. them. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. that's pretty. It's my birth date, my name, and a jasmine flower. Sort of. Nice. It's not finished yet. I still need white for the flower, but other than that, it's done. No, that looks nice. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So. And there's a purpose. Yeah. Like, there's a reason. You did, It's not a willy nilly. Um, oh no! See, you like, just you just use this tattoo. It like represents because it's my flower and my name and my birth date. Yeah, see, like it's none of my business what it is that you pick, but whatever you pick should have some purpose other than oh no. I just you know we're just whole thing's full of life advice from Jamie. Learn your boyfriend's <laughs> names and don't tattoo yourself willy nilly. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Peace. What else we want to talk about? Uh, oh, I might, when I'm old, like, 17, I think, 16 or 17, I'm going to get the same thing as Jasmine's, but, like, with a different flower. What flower would you get? Uh, I might... Uh, you can't say hair flowers, they don't have over a little. No, I know that. There you go. Um, you get like a I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably get, like, a pink or like yellow rose oh that's cute red my sister's, rose. Got, a, my sister's got a rose i and mean she's, she's like, got a camera too like Jem's she's name, pretty cool but well like mm -hmm. Jem has her name like down i'm gonna have my my name down and then my birth mm -hmm. year just when you get your first tattoo bring a something phone. a mm -hmm. phone or well, something so you don't worry about the tattoo too much that's what yeah, I did. I distracting used my mom's tactics phone. would be good. I wonder if my boyfriend has a TikTok. <laughs> I don't know. You should learn his name and then maybe you can find him on TikTok. I should ask him tomorrow if he's there. Yep, can I name. ask? I'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna go back to this because you 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 you're, you're, you're <laughs> making my brain hurt. How exactly do you get to a stage? Where you're claiming him as your boyfriend and you don't know basic information about him. Like, how did that happen? Uh, I don't know, but he hasn't shared any, any really much of information about him to me. Not yet, anyway. So he's one of those emo kids. Can I point out that that might be considered a red flag? Mm -hmm. Very a red flag. Like, 
Like, I mean, now, I don't know the kid, so I... It's just, just speculation. But when a person won't tell you their name, there's usually a reason for that. And that's usually not a good reason. So, no. like, you, you might want to, before you get too deep into this thing, you might want to find some stuff out about him. Like, his name, a couple likes and dislikes, Maybe hobbies. If he's seeing anybody else right now, that's good information to have. Just yeah. throwing that out there. I mean, you, 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 you get to, you know, relationship how you're going to relationship. Really, technically none of my business. However, I'm going to tell you, you should probably be attempting to learn things about the person that you're spending time with. Just throwing that out. Like, just, you know. I already told Jasmine if it does, like, if he doesn't want to share anything, like, his personal, like, information where I can, like, trust him, then I'm not going to be with him. Yeah, see, that's a good plan. Yes. I mean, like, give him some time to, like, like, nobody's going to give away everything all at once. I don't, I mean, yeah. Like, people that. in general... Yeah, give him time like, to trust you. We're like ogres and onions. We got layers, right? Yeah, see, it's funny. My laugh. <laughs> like yeah. we got layers. Some so, like people those. are gonna, yeah, people are gonna like give give bits and pieces of themselves in little bits and chunks, not all at once. But you should be getting something from your partner. In uh, just something. Yeah. And in my lab, the open house, uh, they said when we uh, learn, like, fighting moves, not to use them on our grandmothers or our siblings. No, probably shouldn't. However, based in my experience with siblings, <laughs> that's probably was likely to happen. Yeah. I was still using them. I don't care. They get them on hers. I mean... <laughs> Not you. Do we got anything else we want to talk about? No. no. Anything else that's, you know, like, burning topic of conversation? Oh, me and my friend Madison, we could not stop laughing. Every time we look at each other, we always laugh. That's fantastic. What does it have to do with anything else? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. That's great. <laughs> it's good to have a friend you can laugh with. That, that's, a good, that's, that, that, that's a good thing, too. Choir has a first... Performance in October, I think. That'll be what the Butter Braid concert. Yep. And I can't See, wait I for the Butter stuff. Braids. I'm buying some. Yeah, I get a couple every year. They're good. They are good. I do like a good Butter Braid. Do we have anything else we want to share? No. Anything we? No. No. <laughs> Get ready for some more reading inspiration. TAC members are going to share some books that they've read and enjoyed. These will be things that we think that everyone should read or that they just might think are fun. I'm reviewing the book Eyewitness. Eyewitnesses is about a person who witnesses a murder and gets stalked by the people who killed the person. Ooh, let me zoom Ooh. in on that cover. People are going to like that. Oh yeah, okay, that looks, fantastic. That sounds like a good book. I'm gonna have to. I might have to get it one day. And you can find that in what section? Young adult. Young adult. Young adult. Yeah. Or it's in our graphic novel section. Graphic yes. novel. Good job. Young adult or <laughs> YA fiction. Okay, so he witnessed a murder. Yeah. Anything else about it? It's like, do you great. like the art style? Do you? Is it good story? Like, what do we got? A lot of his friends die because he witnessed the murder. There's a lot of blood in the story. Ooh, I like blood. <laughs> Sounds awful, but I know lots of people who would read that. If I had to rate this book, I'd rate it a 8 out of 10. Awesome, pretty cool. Okay, did you have anything else you wanted to talk about? Or just that one? This is... What about Heartstopper? Some other time. Some other time. Okay. So nothing else? You're all done? Yeah.
Okay, fan. Okay, so we have some books that we can recommend. These, in theory, are books we've read and know are good. Or they're books we're looking at right now and want to read, and therefore we're going to recommend them to other people. Does somebody want to go first, or do we want me to go first? Uh, you want to go first, or you go first? Okay, okay. So, uh, this book is called <laughs> Plain James. The Plain Jane. Plain James. James. Plain James. Graphic novel. And it's a graphic novel. And I would really recommend this to, like, people that are interested in this kind of stuff. That, like, Let's read see. picture books almost. You know what it's about? No. Um, okay, so artsy misfit Jane Beckles is forced to leave her beloved city behind for the boring suburb of Kent Waters. She thinks her life is over. But then she finds where she belongs at the reject table in the cafeteria along with fellow misfits Brain Jane, Theater Jane, and Sporty Polly Jane. United by only two things, a shared name and a frustration with the adults around them, the girls form a secret club dedicated to fighting suburban apathy with guerrilla works of art scattered around their small town. That looks, that does sound pretty cool. Yeah, like, if you're interested in these kind of books. Yeah, art, graphic novels, misfits. It's a yeah. lot of different, that checks a lot of different boxes. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, I know some people that I like are... that it's got different colors. Like, some of this is green. Yep, and like... Pink. And some of it's pink. And purple. And there's some purple. Yeah, there's some like purpley. I wonder if it's different, if it's like each Jane has a different color. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. I don't know if that's really the truth. Like, I, I might I be know. making that up, but that's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> I know some people that are interested in books like this, so. Yeah. Yeah. Would really recommend that one. Okay. Here we go. Um, I found this book. Do What's it called? It's called Lighter Than My Shadow. Let me zoom in. Yeah, it's also a comic book. It is a graphic novel, yes. Yeah. Um, I think this one, is this one, um, this one might be a, like, memoir. Let me look. Yeah. It's like a true story. It's like a true, this is my life kind of story. Why did you, why did you pick that one? Um... I thought it, I found it interesting because um, it has like kind of different colors. It has like pink, like a greenish kind of color, and like gray. I thought it was interesting, so. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I think if I remember correctly from when I ordered it, in 2018 it's been quite a few years but i think it's a like it talks about like depression and anxiety and dealing with dealing with those sorts of things and like the um it's like a artist representation of what those chaotic thoughts can feel like see if you see you can see it's like very mm, like uh, scattered and gross and i don't i don't like eh. Like, it's hard to describe, but in words, but like, that's kind of how it feels. Hard to describe in words. Um, do we have anything else? Do you, do you two have anything else? In theory, these are supposed to be ones you knew were good and could recommend, but this works too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This book, A Crossroads at Midnight. Well, that's cool. It's got a hole in it. Yeah, See? like, you can, like, see through it. See an eyeball. Uh, I would recommend this book because I personally would. It like looks to like read a U book. It's kind of freaky. Yeah, because it's about like cursed possessions, entities, and monstrous things. And I would be really interested in it. Like, I would really recommend this book to people that like loves horror. And yeah, like here's some. It looks terrifying. Yep. It's got kind of a cute style. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. I've read this book. Oh, it's... look at that one we know. <laughs> Woo! Semi-famous. It is by a semi-famous comedian. <laughs> <laughs> I do like it. It's a true story of near celebrity. I like that. <laughs> and he takes a look at if is being famous worth it or not and things like that. Like, does it really make you happy and stuff? Well, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's very interesting. 
and he takes a look at like the first people who are famous and stuff like that. So I like that. That's neat. Okay, cool. Um, I ha also have another book. It's called um, Best Friends. And um, let me zoom in. Yeah. You're very far away from the camera today, Anna. There, best friends. This is um, Shannon Hale and Lewin Pham. Um, we have quite a few books with Sh by Shannon Hale. Um, I do think we have Real Friends, which is the companion to this one. Um, have you read this one, Hannah? No, not yet. You might like it. It's very similar stylistically to Smile that you were talking about earlier tonight. Yeah. In the four hours we've been talking about things. Yep. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Is that all you have to say? That's yeah. enough. That's good. Okay. I have one. I've actually read this cover to cover the entire thing, which if anybody has been paying attention over the years, Jamie doesn't do that often. It's, this is where it ends. It's by Mariek Nakamp. I probably butchered that name. I'm very sorry, but this, um, this is a, this one is, this. we read this for book club one year when we actually tried to all read the same book which didn't work very well, but this was a really good book. I read this whole thing. Um, it's, it's, um, it's a school shooting book. Um, and it goes through the day, um, like minute by minute of the shooting, like how it, how it goes down. Like, see, if you can see the, the inside cover, it breaks it down by like 10 a.m., 10.02, 10.03, and 10.05. Um, at 10 a.m., the principal of Opportunity High School finishes her speech, welcoming the entire student body to a new semester and encouraging them to excel and achieve. 10.02, the students get up to leave the auditorium for their next class. 10.03, the auditorium doors won't open. And 10.05, someone starts shooting. Told from four different perspectives over the span of 54 harrowing minutes, terror reigns as one student's calculated revenge turns into the ultimate game of survival. This one was very well written. It was, it was, it was legitimately terrifying. Like I read it, I read it all in one sitting because I couldn't put it down because it was very, it was very catching. And then it was, it was, shh. She does a very good job of capturing the emotions of this kind of act, this kind of event. And it was, it was, I was so freaked out because I read it. Well, I did something I know better than to do because, and I started it before bed, which is why I read it all in one sitting because I have to know what happens next. Um, yeah. But I was, it was so like emotionally like freaky that I had to watch two, count them, two Bob Ross how to paint videos in order to calm down enough to sleep. But it was, it was really good. And it was one of the few books all year that most of book club actually read and could talk about. Um, I did have one, one kid who read it while sitting in an auditorium for an assembly, which I don't recommend because <laughs> that makes it a little extra freaky. But it was, this was a really, this is a good one. This one is. And it's based off like the Columbine and all that. Yeah, it is. It's, it is, it is something that, is based on sadly it is based on real like real shit. events and things that um no things that hopefully by to. explaining them in a fictional manner we can we Try can we can understand more and therefore it's prevent so things but so far as I mean, this was in 2016, and so far we are still dealing with these sorts of things. Think, but, like, but the fiction of it helps explain and understand and make you empathetic towards the reality of it. Yeah. We do also have in nonfiction, we have some really good nonfiction books about school shootings. I should have grabbed one of them because we have the one that was... Um, compiled by parkland students after the florida shooting mm. um they it's it's poetry they had written it's essays they had written it's artwork they had done like afterwards like, as an effort to explain and work through their emotions from that day because two shootings i do remember that actually happened was the one in texas and the one mm -hmm. that happened in like england 
like I think a couple months ago. Yeah, there's I use this as a horrible thing over. to say, but they happen too often. I have trouble keeping track of which ones which. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're all over TikTok, Facebook, and all yeah. that. Yeah. I do think we're getting better about talking about them. However, I don't know that we we have turned that talk into any reliable action yet. So yeah. hopefully someday this will be something that is like, more of a fiction than a reality. Are but actually teaching us to know the signs of things and like to know if someone's planning anything like to help Sorry, them out your whole face is covered. and whatnot <laughs> so at least we can like try to stop it mm -hmm. and i do way. think that the better the better we get about talking about mental illness and mental wellness and you know talking about that kind of thing so that there isn't as much of a stigma and people feel like they can get help and then are able to get help, I think that that will help in the prevention of this. I don't think it's the Band-Aid to fix all of it, but I do think it's a, it'll definitely help. If I get, mm -hmm. do get this book, and I, mm -hmm. if I wait in like two or three days, this is the, probably the fastest I've read a book. Yeah. Because I want to read this one so bad. That one is, a, that one's a good one. Um. Okay, so now that we have all, come away with lots of books we want to we, we want to read but probably don't have time to read are we done do we have anything else to say we've talked for a long time we have so yeah. I, I think that covers it okay awesome yeah bye bye okay go hi i'm brianna francis and i am a tsu member and we are here to talk about book recommendations and today i have the wilder girls by rory powers Ooh. It's a psychological okay, thriller. I'm gonna... Be just a little louder. We're trying... Jane's trying new stuff. Like, I brought the thing... See, I brought the microphone down with me. So that we could do two... Two versions of this at once. But I don't know how well... See, my voice is loud. You just gotta talk a little louder. Okay, okay do you wanna so... Restart? Wild or Girls is great. No, that's fine. I tell everybody that the whole time. Have you ever listened to one of these podcasts? No. Yeah, no, I tell everybody the whole hour. They got to be louder. So you can just keep going. You're talking about Wilder Girls. Why is it great? Okay. Wilder Girls is a psychological thriller. Oh. Yeah. Okay. No, that's awesome. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. It's about a school on Raxter Island. It's called Raxter School for Girls, and they kind of like a rewritten pandemic like fantasy pandemic Ooh. so <laughs> those were really fun until we lived through one yeah and then they got less fun yeah <laughs> um basically the government the cdc's hold them to wait at the school and quarantine and to stay alive and the navy yeah, okay that's usually a good plan we're just gonna stay alive yeah i can do that because <laughs> well that didn't happen because <laughs> the CDC eventually stopped giving them food rations and they started taking the girls out one by one to start doing testing Ooh. in another part of the island and then they eventually just quit it all together because they couldn't find a cure and so when their friend Baylor I believe I don't know buy it when buy it goes missing Hi Heidi yeah Heidi <laughs> and one of her friends Reese, they go and try to look for by it and they find out that the CDC has been testing on the girls. Hmm. Sounds kind of freaky. Yeah, but... but. So, it, it gets classified with those books Jasmine was talking about that I wouldn't read, but it's super cool yeah. and I'm glad somebody likes them. Yeah, they are really good. There's not a sequel to it, but I really wish there was. <laughs> <laughs> so it ended horribly? Yeah, it ended with them going out on a boat looking for by it because they never found her. That's it? Then it was just... I hate when they're just over. Like, there yeah. should be, like, a purpose, a reason, an end. There should be an end. Like, a real end. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else to say? No. Okay. Welcome to the segment where we talk about the state of libraries today. The library world is in constant flux. As library users, with a little bit of inside scoop, TAC members have a unique perspective, and we thought that it would be interesting to start talking about these topics. The goal is to hear from teens what they think, not just my opinions and information spat out at you. 
we're still working on the talking about these things rather than just listening about these things, but hopefully we're going to get there. As a reminder, the views and opinions that are expressed within our program are the thoughts of TAC members and do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of Marvin Memorial Library as an organization. Thank you. So for our first State of Libraries Today discussion for season four, we're going to talk a bit about banned books because we usually talk banned books in September because Banned Books Week is normally the last week of September. This year, it's the first week of October, but based on our general ability to podcast on a schedule, the September podcast is probably a better one to talk about banned yeah. books and um, that kind of thing. Keep in mind, when we talk about banned books, these are books that you still have access to. It's not like they are completely wiped off the face of the earth. It's just yeah. these are books or authors that have been challenged in public spaces, in public libraries, yeah. in school libraries, in school classrooms. These are things that people have argued over whether or not they should be there. Um, as a as a refresher, because it's been like a whole year since we talked about banned books and the definition of banned books and why we talk about banned books. Um, this is what ALA, the American Library Association's um, banned books site, has to say um, on this year's numbers. In a time of intense political polarization, library staff in every state are facing an unprecedented number of attempts to ban books. ALA's Office for Intellectual Freedom um, documented 1,269 demands to censor library books and resources in 2022, the highest number of attempted book bans since ALA began compiling data about censorship in libraries more than 20 years ago. The unparalleled number of reported challenges in 22 nearly doubles the 729 book challenges reported in 2021. The theme for Banned Books Week 2023 is Let Freedom Read. When we ban books, we're closing off readers to people, places, and perspectives. But when we stand up for stories, we unleash the power that lies inside every book. We liberate the array of voices that need to be heard and the scenes that need to be seen. Which is a pretty good theme. I like that theme. That's a different one. Yeah. We've been um, celebrating your right to read for a couple of years. I like this year's Let Freedom Read. That's kind of fun. Um, and we will have book displays and information in the teen zone. We try to make yeah. sure we do that every year, but we are, it's not quite ready yet because Banned Books Week is later this year. So we started September with like nonfiction books because we don't highlight those as often as we do the fiction ones. So they're out, they're out now, but, um, Banned Books will be available soon. So do we have any thoughts or opinions things we want to say to get us started so in like the the ala's office for intellectual freedom tracked almost 1269 challenges in 2022 80 percent of that is like books graphic novels and textbooks 6% of it is displays and exhibits, 4% is programs and meeting rooms, 1% is films, and 7% of that is, like, others, like, filtering, accesses, databases, magazines, online resources, artwork, social media, music. Okay. And I'm going to borrow this. We are, we are looking at, we're using um, the ALA um, infographic for this year for all of our stats and numbers. These are not things that we made up for. These came from the Office of Intellectual Freedom from the American Library Association. And as Banned Books Week gets closer, these are things that we will highlight on our Instagram page as well. We us I usually make sure we post multiple things about, but in general, we have this segment of the podcast that I'm kind of futilely trying to get off the ground because you as regular library users should have an opinion about what is going on in libraries today so on a personal level what do we think about the removal of items so in 
like Mansfield. And as an opinion, it's when I used there's to no wrong Mans- answer. Right? When I Just... used to go to Mansfield, like you can go into their library and pick out like a movie. What does this have to do with the man book I stuff? Know. But I mean, yeah. that's a good topic. We're going to come back to that okay. towards the end as to other things that are happening that we so, like as opposed to things that we maybe don't like. So, like, personal opinion. Do we like the removal of library materials? No. <laughs> no, there you go. See, I no. just, like, like I said, it's your opinion. There's no wrong answer, but you got to give me something. Um, no, generally speaking... Personally, for myself, I, I am not, I am, I do not think, no, no, we don't, we don't ban books, we. No, because, like, some people like certain books, if you ban them, those people that like that kind, like those kind of books will get mad and won't come to the library anymore, and we do not want that. That's part of it, too. Plus, we, for example, we here at Marvin serve... Like, the town population is, what, just about 9,000 people? But our yeah. service district, because it's a school district library, that's approximately 12,000 people, I think. Because it's outside it is, of city yeah. limits. It's the other side, too. So it's approximately, we're going to say we, we serve approximately 12,000 people. Yep. And our, the goal, the mission of a library, is to have things for everybody. Now... We have a finite amount of space and a finite amount of money and, you know, to do things with. But the goal is generally to have a little bit of something for everybody, right? So 12,000 people, that's a lot of different people. That's a lot of different opinions. That's a lot of different needs. So what one person likes, another person isn't going to like. So, like, to go back to what we were talking about in what we're currently reading... I don't like reading the same things that Jasmine likes reading. So, do we think do we think it's right for me to walk in the door and say I hate all of those books? Nobody else is allowed to read them. No, like that's different. People have different opinions. Yes, and different needs and different things that we're wanting. And like if. If we did that, if I got rid of all of those things, or if I refused to buy the really creepy murder mysteries where the girl ends up in the bottom of the well and it's terrifying, if I refused to buy those, we would probably lose people. Like, we'd lose Jasmine at least. <laughs> like, yep. Because mm-hmm. I'm interested in, like, crime and horror, <laughs> murder, and all that. Mm hmm. So, then the fact that our numbers went up drastically. Um, If you look at the number for 2012, it was 339. The 2020 number was 223. That's a, to go from 2020 with 223 to 2022 with 2,571 um, unique titles challenged, that's... Lot. It's kind of a scary number if you're looking at, like, look at this. Look at this cute little graph, right? And everybody's, like, down here like this. And then all of a sudden we go, boom, way up there. Like. That is a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's a significant number of things. Um, let's see here. Surveys indicate that 82 to 97% of book challenges... Um, documented requests to remove materials from schools or libraries remain unreported and receive no media. So this is the number we know. It doesn't even include the number of things that we don't know, things that haven't been highlighted or published. So any other thoughts? Like somebody besides me should talk. Uh, <laughs> so... Because really the goal of this is for... Your opinions, not yeah. my opinions, and yet we always keep talking like it's always so, me. <laughs> in this pie chart right there, mm-hmm. it like shows who like initiates these challenges and whatnot, 
and 17% of that is like religious groups, 15% of it is like board administration, 3% is librarians and teachers, and 3 is elected officials, and 4% is like others, non-residents. Mm -hmm. Don't forget our two largest numbers here that are listed on the pie chart, chart where you can actually read them. Oh. It's 30% parents and 28% patrons. So patrons. those are just like general public or users. And I don't want to say when we talk about banned books and things, a lot of people get very upset about um, I'm trying to figure out a good way to word this where it doesn't come across in a manner I don't mean. Um, people who are concerned about their own children yeah, I think tend to overreact is a strong word but they tend to take it an extra step further and instead of just saying my kid can't read that they tend to then say well no kid should read this and no. while there are age appropriateness things that come into play it's why we put certain things in the children's department or the teen department or the adult department and not the other like like if you go into a library and you go into like the adult section to say and you pick up a book and you read the back of it and whatnot you gotta expect that there is gonna be stuff in there that like cussing and other things so it's not really the library's fault per se like if you pick it up and you read it and you know what it's about you already know what's gonna happen so yeah it's your See, that's that's where libraries going. come from in this argument for the most part is in general um that it's a personal responsibility on the patron on the parent to take care of for themselves and for their own children yeah what they're reading and taking home not on us on us it is to have a wide variety of things for our wide variety of people. Make sense? Yeah, like yeah. if your okay. kid <laughs> accidentally like opens the book and read parts of it that they weren't supposed to see, that's not really on the library, that's on you for leaving it out where the kids can reach it. Like common sense. So yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what we're gonna go with. We're gonna go okay. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's, 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 yeah. It's just, it's mostly hands-on. Like, should be involved. Yes. Um, do we have any other thoughts on this? This is this year's list. There were several ties in this, this year's list. So our top 10 is actually top 13. Um, I yeah. can tell you we have one, two, three, four, um, five six seven we have at least seven of those this one we might we used to we might not anymore because it's an older book um but we do have several of these here at marvin yep i saw the movie of that one it's a good movie yep i know one of the extras in that movie that's sorry for those of you who can't see the um the 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 list um perks of being a wallflower that one has been and that's an older book, too. That's a book that has been on the list for multiple reasons for decades. I, when did they write that book? Probably since they wrote that book. If this doesn't yeah. say when it's written. It doesn't have a publisher's date. But that's one that Perks of Being a Wallflower has been targeted multiple times over the years for yeah. um, content. I generally, when people ask, because when we put up the displays, people always ask about it. Like, well why would somebody do this or why would somebody argue against books it's usually my the simplest way to explain it i find is usually that when books are honest especially books for children and books for teens when books are honest that is when they come under the most fire like things that open honest dialogue and honest conversation is usually the things that 
caused the most stir amongst people. Yep, more drama. Mm hmm. Which, once again, personally, I am a proponent of those honest conversations because it's, it's sometimes it's really hard to talk about that kind of thing. And if you have a book, the book is sometimes a good way of bringing it up or opening the lines of communication, opening up that discussion. Um, yeah. Judy Bloom has said multiple times, um, and I should, I should have pulled this quote up too, cause I like it. I use it quite frequently. Um, to paraphrase it, cause I don't know what exactly she says, um, that books are good. Like we should never be taking books away from children, but we can use those books to open those conversations, to read the book with your kids, read the books together, and then use it as a way to have those difficult conversations. And speaking of Judy Bloom, that woman is really awesome. Like, have you ever seen anything about Judy Bloom? Do you know who Judy Bloom is? Because mm -hmm. she's, she's an older person. She's, I think Judy, she's like 80 or 90. She's somewhere between 80 and 90. She's been writing for children for a really long time. She wrote Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing, um, Tiger Eyes, Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret, like those books, like those books. Um, and almost as long as she has been writing, she has been on banned books lists. Yeah, <laughs> like long time. That's what she keeps, I saw an interview with her over the summer where that's what she said. She's like, I thought I was done arguing this, <laughs> but apparently we're not, so we'll do it again. But she, there's a documentary on her on, um, I think it's on Amazon Prime, that is really interesting, really cool, because she talks about that, how she, how she started writing and then how she got um, roped into the censorship arguments of the 80s and then how it's all come back and she's still in those, because she was, she, she wrote for kids and teens honestly about what it's like to be I would a teen to be a preteen to go through puberty to go through first relationships all that kind of stuff and yeah. so I she's I do recommend Judy Bloom is a very she's very cool she's a cool she is a yeah. cool lady and she opened up she retired and opened up a bookstore in Key West cool. yeah like <laughs> exactly she retired and went to started a library Just, well, not a library. It is a bookstore. You have to pay. But, like, it, I still think that's pretty neat. Yeah, I probably would read half of these. Mm-hmm. They're good. Um, yep. They're usually good titles. They're usually interesting. They're usually um, modern, up-to-date, you know, reflections of what's going on today in today's yeah. society. Yeah. Um, Toni Morrison, that's an older one, too, though. Like, so sometimes more... Things we would classify as classics do come up still. Because The Bluest Eye is, like I said, that's an older book that's been on lists for a long time that is still... Mm -hmm. Do we have anything else we want to say about this? And by we, I mean not me. Because I have, once again, been talking uh, a lot. Not really. Nothing I can... Okay. I do think it's a good thing that we talk about it. And we might talk about it again in October with whoever comes next. Um, as because Banned Books Week is in October this year, and we can talk about some more of the infographics and some more of the stats because I didn't print them because I didn't know for sure if we were going to talk about that today. Now, other things in libraries are there happy things going on in libraries that we want to talk about? Things that we know, things that other libraries do that we think are really cool. This is where you okay, about so <laughs> in uh, Mansfield, when I used to live in Mansfield, uh, they used to let people like grab a movie and put it in like a they they had computers Hello. and what, whatnot. So they uh, had like these computer kind of things. They had like a DVD thing where you could put pop in DVD and watch it on a computer yeah. and whatnot. So that was cool. I don't know if they still do it anymore. So, yeah. But I used to go to the Master's Library when I was younger and get a lot of movies. They had, like, a playtime place almost. And so that was fun. Mm -hmm. 
there are a lot of really good things going on in libraries. I know when we started this segment, we kind of end up talking about all of the scary things that are happening in libraries. The reason that libraries and librarians are a little, a little, a little terrified of life right now. But there are really good, really cool things happening too. So it's always yeah. good to talk about that stuff too. Um, there was there was something I saw that I was like, oh, I want to make sure I remember to mention this, and I can't remember now what it was. Oh, phooey. But do we have anything else? Any other library things that we like? Uh, things that are going on in other other places? Like, with Shelby's library, I like how they, like, uh, let... They do, like, a trick-or-treat thing, which most library, libraries do not do. So I like how we do that. That is really fun. That, that, we do that mostly because Halloween's my favorite. <laughs> it is. But, but it is it is a good, the community does usually like that. We get a big, we get big support for that one because yep. we, I always, I always advertise it as a, you don't have to wear your snowsuit under your costume, but, you know, because we do it inside. But, like, when we do this, we help mm-hmm. out with that. Like, we do, like, games, uh, we pass out candy mm-hmm. and other things. Like we do arts and crafts too, and so, yeah, that it's been for the past two years that I done it. Um, I really did like it to see all the smiling these kids' faces and other things. So, yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's a fun one. Um, I really wish I could remember what that thing was. Because it was something really cool. Because in the spring, in our season three finale, our final episode we did in May, we talked about, like, we I tried to find us some happy things because you had requested it. Um, and we talked about that um, read to a bunny program that somebody was doing. Like, instead of read to a dog, it was read to a bunny. Um, and somebody else, some other library had brought in, like, a, a miniature pony, like a miniature horse for... Um, some kind of programming. Um, and it was something along the lines of that, something that was like really fun that had come across the um, OLC, what's happening in Ohio libraries email. Um, if you if you can talk about something else, I'll see if I can find it real quick. Uh, um, but, like yeah. anything else we like that's going on in libraries uh, that are super cool that we've see. seen, things that we wish we could do that we're just now thinking about that would be kind of fun. Um, probably like the letting, probably seeing if we could probably like watch and grab a DVD from the movie collection and probably see if we can watch it on the computer. That's, that's kind of a cool idea. That's a tricky thing because most newer computers don't have those disk drives anymore. I know, you gotta find we, like an older mm-hmm. one. We do have an adapter, um, that can do, um... Like, you just, you plug it in like you would a flash driver, like we do our microphone. Yeah. Only the thing, it's a disk drive. Like, so you can still attach, we st- yeah. we do still, um, we do still use that occasionally when people ask. Um, we have little SD cards you can borrow now, like an SD reader, because our, cur- our current patron computers don't, um, don't have those on them. And so, here we go. Um, um, what else do we have? We have hot spots now. Have we talked about those yet? Do we know what that is? Um, well, Marvin now offers, um, hot spots. Those are, that's like mobile, it's like Wi-Fi, like, like mobile Wi-Fi things. Kind of things. Yeah, yeah, you get a little box and then you can, it, it's really not supposed to be used to replace home internet, but, like, if you're going on vacation and you're not sure if you're going to have connection, that's a good thing to take with you because, like, you can use it in the car and stuff. Yeah, especially. high school does that if kids mm-hmm. don't have internet for, like, homework and whatnot. Yes. Yeah. Oh, hey, Greenville Public Library hosted a take, a make, take, and bake program. That's kind of cool. For kids. For your kids, yeah. So, like, that's where you would have, we would have, like, mixed it all together here. Take it home, and then all you have to do is put it in the oven, which is kind of cool. Especially if, A, the library doesn't have an oven, or B, like us, we have one oven, and if you had ten people who were trying to do something, yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. Yeah, like... 
Can you keep somebody talk? Um, uh, let's see. Ooh, Lakewood Public Library is teaming up with the Cle Cleveland Clinic for a mental wellness book club. Oh, that's kind of a cool. cool topic. You know, like, I mean, I don't, might be kind of heavy to talk mental wellness every single month, but that's a cool topic. We could maybe add that to our nerd herd list. Yeah, it would. That would be kind of fun. I mean, we have a lot of really good ones. I'm going to see. Yeah. This is why you should be talking about this kind of thing. The libraries share ideas and we get good stuff. Um, mental wellness at nerd uh, herd. Let's hope I remember what this note means later. Yep. Um, let's see. Homework help. We do that. Um, yeah, we do. Teen fan fest. I wonder what that is. Huh. It's probably like, like the mini Comic Con that Shelly did it that one year. You know, she brought in like a cartoonist and some, you know, yeah, some other people. That would be kind of fun. That's a lot of work though for people that you don't know if it's gonna gonna go over well or not. We did a we did do a um, book fair last year that went decently. It did. Mm. That was fun. Uh, Nerd a lemonade play stand. That's cute. Uh -huh. Yeah, Grafton Midview Public Midview Public Library has added a lemonade play stand to its children's department. That's cute. Uh, we have no room to put anything else in our children's department, but that's adorable. No, we do not. Back to school carnival. Oh, Athens County Public Libraries has a new history mural at its Gloucester location. Ooh, yeah. We like murals. We're we're fans of those. We have one. Oh, Fairfield County District Library is holding Dobby's Sock Drive at all library branches. That is the best name for a sock drive. Um, yeah. While the connection to the Harry Potter story is whimsical, the needed addresses in the community is very real. That's kind of cool. Like It's like a clothing guide. This Cleveland Public Library is hosting a natural hair symposium. Huh. Covering everything from braids to twists out, head wrapping, and more. That's a cool topic. That's really fun. Yeah. The Cleveland Public Libraries do a lot of a lot of different unique things that it does. They have a they have a larger staff than we do, so you can get into some yeah. of those more unique kind of niche things whereas we're we're kind of, you know, there's only so many hours in the day. I can only do so many things. So sometimes that limits us on what we're able to do. But that's a cool topic. That's really fun. Yeah, like Shelby is a not really a tiny town, but it's small. And Cleveland... Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Cleveland's is. huge. Um, oh, I did see this on Facebook. The Wright Memorial Public Library gave away a chair as one of their reading summer reading prizes because they have a regular patron who manages a furniture store. Which is just, just, just kind of different. Like, we've never given away a chair. We've done bicycles. I know people who do... I know libraries who do TVs. That's, that's different. Um, Mercer County District Libraries teamed up with the Rockford Community Fire Department for a program at the main library about fire safety. That's always cool when you can bring in a truck and people can, like, see the trucks and look at the trucks and touch the trucks. The one year they even let us use the hose. That was pretty fun. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, see, we do have some good stuff going on, too. I like to yeah. be able to incorporate that just a bit. Do we have any other library-related things? Uh, I mean, I like we ended it on a happier note than we started. That's always a good... It, yeah. Good idea. But I can't. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. I mean, that's a lot of stuff. We talked for like half an hour about that. I feel like yeah. I mostly talked, as long but as I, nice. I tried. As long so we talk about something. Twenty-eight mm -hmm. minutes. Yeah. Almost thirty. Yeah. Okay. Are we done? Yep. Okay. Thanks for listening to this month's teen conversation, which has gotten a lot longer over the seasons. Remember, you can watch us on YouTube by searching Marvin Memorial Library dash Children's Department or by following the link on our teen programs page of our website, marvinlibrary.org. We can also be found on Spotify and other podcast sites. See our website for the full list. Thanks again for listening, especially if you made it all the way to the end of this to hear me saying this because this was a lot of stuff you listened to. So thank you. <laughs>